November 2013. The high-end super typhoon wreaks havoc in the Philippines, a huge cyclone whose wind gusts exceed 300 kilometers per hour. And huge waves devastate the coasts. Haiyan hits nearly 10 million people. Of those, 600,000 are left homeless. For Marinelle, 16 years old at the time, it's the beginning of a long struggle. I don't want to see my community and my family being in this um, situation again. Seeing the devastation, seeing our house has been washed out, seeing all of these people trying hard to survive and just getting literally everything in the ocean, it awakened me like I need to do something. So I don't want just to sit there and play and do nothing and just wait for another disaster to come and just be a victim of all my life. This is not a battle that we will face in the future. This is a battle that we need to face now in the present. Scientists are adamant that climate change is caused by human activity. While it affects populations all around the globe, the countries of the south are the first victims. Starting with African countries whose greenhouse gas emissions are negligible. This is precisely what worries Elizabeth. A lot of people have been saying that Africa will be the hardest hit by climate change, but the reality is that we are already facing the impacts. Just a few months ago, we had the aspect of the floods and the droughts and mudslides. So we've, we've actually had the worst outbreak of locusts in 25 years. Kenya, where Elizabeth lives, is suffering the violent consequences of these changes. Because of the increase in the amount of rainfall, billions of locusts have invaded the country. We fear it a lot because it has never happened ever since. We, we came to this place. It is the first of the kind and it is so terrifying. These swarms of insects, 60 kilometers long and 40 kilometers wide, destroy everything in their path. In a single day, these locusts can devour the agricultural production that would be consumed by 80 million people. I actually come from one of the regions in Kenya that is mostly dependent on agriculture. So you can imagine what kind of damage this means for the African continent. These phenomena are not unique to Kenya. In West Africa, in Niger, the rainfall is getting more and more irregular often followed by severe droughts. This directly threatens the survival of the herds, which are raised by the nomads of the Fulani people. Once again, the life of humans, as we know it, could be seriously threatened. On the other side of the world, in the Amazon, Helena is also witnessing a major change in the climate. And for her, the drought that now threatens Latin America is no coincidence. Una consecuencia también del cambio climático. Ahora que viene una época de sec de, de sequía en, en Ecuador que va que va a ser mucho calor, no en los ríos van a secarse totalmente. Ya vimos el anterior año. Yo nunca he visto eso en mi vida. Mis mayores lo notan bastante. Dicen que es Totalmente different de, de, de como crecieron ellos. 
These phenomena are becoming more frequent, more intense, and there are numerous consequences. While some countries are suffering the full force of the heat wave, others are victims of terrible floods and landslides. In June 2013, in Uttarakhand, a small state in northern India at the foot of the Himalayas, a violent monsoon caused dams to break, and with them came torrents of mud. At the age of 12, Redima has a sad memory of this disaster. At that time, because of that flood, there was a huge area lost. It washed away many houses and many animals and people were killed during that flood. This huge flood killed a thousand people and displaced another 70,000. Many kids were crying for their parents, like, I lost my mom, I lost my dad, and I lost my home. What should I do now? I don't know what to do. I want my mom and I want my dad. So at that time, I felt very bad. More than 5,000 deaths have been recorded in India in 2013 alone, the worst natural disaster of the decade. And so our questions came in my mind, and again, a thing popped up that, who was responsible for that? And like, so my parents told me that we are responsible. As with heat waves, typhoons or floods, scientists say there is also a link between rising temperatures and the intensity of fires. In 2019, huge fires destroyed more than 8 million hectares in Australia. My main thing is I just want to be alive and for all of us to be safe. I really don't have any feelings about my house at the moment at all. These mega fires have killed 24 people and it's estimated that more than a billion animals have died. A glimpse into the disasters to come if we continue to do nothing to protect the climate. Direct victims or spectators of climate change, the young women of the greater generation decided to bring an end to this chaos. How can new generations accept growing up in a world that adults are putting in danger? How can we live with the permanent threat of the next catastrophe? Without answers, these questions are warning bells to the world and its leaders. For mucho tiempo veíamos a la crisis climática como un oso polar eh, en el peligro de extinción por los glaciares. Antes cuando hablábamos de crisis climática y demás era un problema del futuro. Ver esas imágenes te hacen dar cuenta que no es un problema del futuro, es un problema que ya está pasando y que ya está teniendo consecuencias. France to Australia, from Poland to the United States. The greater generation is mobilizing in the face of these reoccurring disasters. It's September 2018 and school strikes for the climate are beginning. What are the youths fighting for? More effective world environmental policies. Our Prime Minister thinks we should be in school right now, and maybe we should be. But how can we just sit by and not do anything to protect the future of this planet? On Thursday or Friday, tens of thousands of students miss school to take part in demonstrations in support of action against global warming. One year later, mobilisation is at a record high. More than four million young people are marching in cities around the world. generation really shouldn't have to be out here missing school. Yeah. We should be in school. It's so empowering to see so many young people stand up and, you know, finally we're feeling the position that we play or the, the role that we play as young people in a larger picture. Now we are starting to see a narrative and a possibility where young people understand what it means to stand up for what they believe in, for what is right. 
and just go for it. Et de voir tout d'un coup qu'on a la, la masse avec nous, que ce n'est pas juste euh, un sujet de niche, des gens, euh, euh, des écolos bobos dans leur coin qui agissent. Là, ça devenait vraiment euh, public, quoi. Après ça, tous les mois, il y a eu d'autres marches pour le climat. Euh, les médias ont commencé vraiment à s'approprier le sujet. Et euh, les célébrités, euh, des personnalités euh, se sont emparées aussi du sujet. Et, euh, et depuis, euh, le, le, clairement, c'est presque inévitable maintenant, l'écologie. En France, même avant le début des démonstrations, un événement va choquer les jeunes activistes At the end of August 2018, Nicolas Hulot, Minister of Ecological and Solidarity Transition, appointed by Emmanuel Macron, resigns. Ma démission signifie une forme de résignation. Le fait que le ministre de l'écologie démissionne en disant qu'il est incapable de faire bouger les choses de l'intérieur, c'est euh, quelque chose de, 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 de super marquant en fait. C'est dire que le politique actuellement euh, n'est pas à la hauteur de l'enjeu climatique. For the majority of these young women, the lack of decision-making by political leaders in the face of global warming is serious. This irresponsible behavior has prompted many to take action, especially in the United States. I can think of a moment what took me from just being worried about it to taking action, and that is the 2016 election in the United States. Obama, he wasn't a climate champion by any means, but he wasn't like overtly hostile to the cause. So it was like, oh, maybe they'll step up, maybe they'll do something. And then with the election of Trump, it's just kind of a blow. It was a reminder that like, I can't wait for the American government to do something. And so I was like, wait a minute, I can't just sit around. These leaders are not going to do something. And so I have to do something. Donald Trump in the United States. Vladimir Putin in Russia, and Tony Abbott in Australia. But also Nicolas Sarkozy in France. The decade of 2010 was marked by the number of political leaders who make no effort to hide their climate skepticism, like the leader of the Brexit party, Nigel Farage, who doesn't hold back with his own skepticisms and even lies in front of the European Parliament. It is time to stop this stupidity and to help you. There's the NASA photograph, last August of the ice cap, the northern ice caps. And there is the NASA photograph this year of the ice caps. It is increased by 60% in one year. We may have made one of the biggest, stupidest, collective mistakes in history by getting so worried about global warming. These statements explain and reinforce the mistrust of young climate activists towards politicians. 